All right, good afternoon, or good evening as it were. It's Thursday. Thank God tomorrow's Friday has been a rather labor-intensive week. Anyway, this video is going to be about diabetes. And the whole reason that I want to make this video is because uh, it's an epidemic in the United States and it's getting worse. And researchers now predict that by 2020, half the population of the United States will either have diabetes or be pre-diabetic. So that's pretty bad. Now, I'm sure amongst us, we all eat well, we exercise, we do our cardio, but I'm sure that probably all of us know somebody who's diabetic or pre-diabetic, or we'll have some experience with it with someone in our family that maybe hasn't really taken great care of themselves, or maybe they have type one, maybe they were just born with diabetes. Now you have type one diabetes and type two diabetes. Now type 1 used to be known as juvenile diabetes and it's generally diagnosed when you're young and it is the inability for your body to produce insulin. And so when you uh, ingest carbohydrates and starches, your body converts this into sugar which becomes glucose and we use glucose for energy of course and lots of other things as you well know. but since you can't produce insulin with type 1, the glucose can't get into the cells. It needs the insulin to get into the cells. That's what insulin does. It drives nutrients in, into cells at uh, a high rate. Now, type 2 diabetes, it develops later on. And here's the thing. Only 5% of people with diabetes in the United States have type 1. So that means 95% of the people with diabetes, supposedly, um, have type 2 diabetes. Okay, now, they don't really, uh, there's a lot of literature uh, where you can look at this reference information and they do, they do stress the exercise component with type 2 diabetes. But I'm going to step right out there and tell you this. I haven't seen yet anyone with type 2 diabetes, right, that developed it later on in life or that was pre-diabetic, you know, heading towards type 2, and now don't get it confused. If you come down with type 2 diabetes and it's left unto its own devices, it, uh, I mean, even with treatment, eventually it will get worse and you'll eventually probably be on insulin, you know, the whole nine yards. And the case with type 2 is that your body cannot make enough insulin to keep up with all the glucose that's in your blood. That glucose levels are so high, blood sugar level is so high, uh, initially the pancreas will work overtime and pump out you know, more than normal amount of insulin to try to keep up. But eventually it will no longer be able to keep up and sooner or later it just plumb will wear out basically and you'll become, uh, this is known as insulin resistance. So, I personally haven't seen anyone with type 2 diabetes that wasn't able to completely reverse it by getting on a frigging treadmill. Now, you don't like the treadmill? Get on some other piece of cardio equipment. It doesn't have to be a treadmill. But basically, this is what you've got to do. If you think of it this way, and now I'm not talking about people with type 1, um, as you guys may recall or may not, I used to have a training partner that I kind of missed, he was a buddy of mine, and uh, he had type 1. He had it since he was a kid, since he was like 4 or 5 years old, and he had an insulin pump and the whole 9 yards. Now there's not much he can do about that except manage it and cope with it, which he did. And, uh, but type 2 diabetes this is what you develop later on and if you get on a treadmill if you get on a piece of cardio equipment you can manage to uh, not only control it and keep the symptoms at bay and keep your blood sugar level in check and be able to eat like a normal person you can actually in most cases every case I've ever seen I'm going to just go right and say that you can reverse it you hear all that racket that's these animals this is the kind of thing I have to deal with when I'm trying to make these videos. It's like a fucking zoo. Anyway, this is supposed to be a very serious video. It's a very serious topic. So what I'm telling you guys is if you have a family member or you have anybody, they're getting older, they're stuck in their ways, 
You know, unfortunately, most people will not get their ass on that treadmill. They will just let it run its course. They'll take medication and every other thing in the world before they'll go and get their ass on a treadmill. Can you believe that? Believe it. It's true. The majority of people, the overwhelming majority, will not, will not straighten their diet out sufficiently enough and get their ass onto a piece of cardio equipment to be able to reverse it. They just won't do it. They just won't do it. I know personally people that won't do it. So I don't get it. Get on a treadmill and you won't have the problem. Basically what it's like is it's kind of like a sponge that you dumped in a bucket of water and you never wrung it out, but you keep trying to put more water into the sponge. You know, where is it going to go? It just floats around in your bloodstream and wrecks havoc, right? The insulin kind of doing its job is when you're wringing the sponge out, you're just completing the cycle. And then you can soak more water up and you can wring it out again, you're completing the cycle. And by completing the cycle and wringing it out, that's what you would do when you get on a treadmill, okay? You, you pile up all this glycogen, you hold as much as you can in the muscles, you hold as much as you can in the liver for endurance energy, right? For like protracted exercise, like cardio. And uh, when you burn this stuff out, you eat more food, you put it back in, you burn it back out, you eat more food and put it back in, you burn it back out. If you eat too much sugar, and bodybuilders, we all know this, if you eat too much sugar, like when you spill over, too many carbs, etc., etc., Okay, when you can't hold anymore, it goes places you don't want it to go. And in extreme cases, when you never wring it out and you never burn it off, uh, you can't put any more anywhere, then that's when you get these things. You get so much of it in your blood and you just can't keep up with it. Your, in, your pancreas cannot keep up with it, produce enough insulin to deal with it. And that's where the trouble begins. And it just gets worse from there. So. If anybody you know and love has a problem like this, talk them into getting on a treadmill. Now, a lot of older folks, they have knee issues, they have joint issues, high impact shit like a treadmill is a little too rough for them, but they've got recumbent bikes. There are other things that they can start out on to try and get back in shape and to try and get some cardiovascular exercise going. Walking, walking is not exercise. Now, I know for a lot of people it is. There are people going to dispute that. I know one guy that uh, he was pre-diabetic and they told him, you know, you're, you're going down the road, you're going to be diabetic. And he was overweight by a lot and he had all kind of health problems and he actually lost over 150 pounds. And this isn't the same guy I referred to recently. This is another guy that I know that I used to work with in another place. And he lost all that weight and kept, you know, healthy, but he, wa he walked at a very brisk pace. He kind of walked at as brisk a pace as I keep on a treadmill for cardio. Because as you know, to do cardio correctly, you don't want to go too fast, you don't want to get too slow. You know what I'm saying? You want to be at a pace where you're really nice and warm, but if you don't have a means to measure your heart rate and you don't know where you should be, which every piece of cardio equipment that I've ever seen has a little chart on it to give you an idea of where to start at. And you go from there, as you get in better shape, of course, you're going to have to elevate that heart rate more to compensate for your conditioning improving. But you want to be at an area where it's uncomfortable for you to have a conversation, but you physically could have a conversation if you really had to. You prefer not to, but you could still have one. Now, if you're going so fast, your heart's so quick, that you could not even have a conversation or carry on a conversation, that's too fast. So that's kind of a way you can gauge it. You'll get used to it and you get the feel for it as you go. I mean, I know exactly where I'm at just from what it feels like, but I still watch my heart monitor. Anyway, that's it for now. I just think it's important to get the message out there. Diabetes is a big problem. You know, if you were born with it, if you're type one, you know, that it, it's, then you know how to deal with it by now. That's for damn sure. By the time you're seeing me talk about it, I can't tell you anything about it. But if you're type two, that's completely reversible. You know, stop eating the shit that you're eating and get your ass on the treadmill. And you know what? Here's the kicker. If you would just get on the treadmill or recumbent bike or whatever will serve the purpose to get your heart rate up there long enough and you do this often enough, regularly, you can pretty much eat a whole lot of shit. Cardio makes up for a lot of room for sin in the diet. And that's, that goes for whether you're just trying to get lean or whether you're, you're, you're fucking just trying to manage your blood sugar levels. So just something to think about, right? Just something to think about. Enough problems come up in life. 
This is one that you can completely thwart, completely turn around. So if you know anybody that has this issue, talk to them about it. Sit down and talk to them and lay some facts on them. All right, that's it for now. Take care. Have an awesome night. And uh, no reason for you to have type 2 diabetes.